All right, so this is the first time doing a kind of an inside star citizen view and everything, kind of reacting to it all. Let's see how it goes and see what kind of comes up. While Star Citizen aims to offer a first person universe of possibilities, at the center of it has always been you and your spaceship. And over the years of development, testing, feedback, and iteration, there have been many changes to the combat and traversal experience. And in the upcoming Alpha 323, the biggest and most anticipated of those makes their presence known with the arrival of master modes. And with that comes additional changes to precision targeting, weapon balance. I did try the master modes in some of the arena commander stuff. It is a little bit hard to get used to at first, but I think once we do, it's actually not going to be bad. Um, I definitely want to get more into it and play with it some more, but at least that kind of gets some play test and everything going and then when 323 does come in definitely going to get a lot more time to kind of mess around and play with it i don't do a lot of combat myself but that kind of gives you a good idea of what's coming what's happening and hopefully be able to get a little bit better with it overall once it does kind of go through that's gimbal use and more what are the instruments so Master Modes is a way for us to really kind of capitalise on what the ships are. Basically, Master Modes are a new game feature that uh, changes all the combat experience inside the, inside the game. So you have a mode for fighting in and a mode for flying from place to place then. A rework of the flight and combat. One thing that I do think might take a lot of getting used to is where if you're in navigation mode, you don't really have your shields or anything. Um, like I said, where I don't do a lot of combat right now, that's definitely going to take a lot of getting used to and hopefully doesn't hurt a ton or it has at least enough of whole HP until armor is included in it to at least kind of get away from certain things if we do need to. My system to essentially try and solve a lot of the problems that players have had with the flight experience. You can decide if you want to be in full combat mode or you're, you're just in transit or you want to get out of a situation as quick as possible. Check fire. Master mode is the thing that makes ship combat exciting and making sure that the ships that you have in the game perform in the roles that we have envisioned for them. Since uh, Citizen Con, we've been bringing Master Modes into Arena Commander. Progress has been quite good, showing off the new modes and letting people get their hands on it. Collecting the feedback, seeing how players respond to that online by monitoring how players react on social channels. Uh, we've been testing internally. I really do like how they have been bringing stuff like this into Arena Commander as well. Gives you kind of a quick overview of it all. And I know there's I'd seen some stuff about a rented commander being dead in the forums and Reddit, things like that, but it's not. They're still adding stuff. They actually are working, like with the roadmap, they brought in some of the beginnings of the resource management with it. So we definitely don't think it's dead. Might not be as updated at times as what we would hope that it would be, but it's still going to be there. Yeah, look. It's a very limited selection of ships, but even so, people seem to like it. So we've taken that feedback and carried on making progress and adapting it all to the rest of the ships as well. We've been watching how players play the game, monitoring analytics, putting it all together and sharing it with the devs who need to see it. How the hell do you know about converting 200 ships to be in Unfortunately, there's only really one way to do it, and uh, that's to not get too intimidated by the number. A team effort, we're uh, just cracking for it, really. The difficult part, of course, especially as a designer, is try to uh, understand the new uh, game dynamics that uh, the, the game system creates, especially in an environment like the PU, and then try to be able to deliver the proper game experience for every ship with a, you know, a different tuning. And that's quite difficult, but that's also what uh, is really interesting about bringing up a new feature. So we're moving each individual ship into an archetype, and we're going to rebalance that ship to the archetype as a starting point. And then basically, once that's complete, we're going to add the individuality into each ship. Each ship has been given a full refresh, and we've we've looked at every ship in the game, assigned them 
a base archetype so that you know what you're getting into from from the get-go i wonder how that's going to play into like the cargo hauling the of course combat's probably going to be without a problem but some of your industrial type ships and some that aren't like military or combat focused how that's going to play into that a little bit all ships based on how big they are and what kind of purpose they serve will get an archetype type assigned to them a typical archetype is a snub fighter very very small very agile but it cannot dish out a lot of damage and it can also not receive a lot of damage before it pops light fighter very maneuverable, decent weapon loadout, and it's basically there for agility engagements. Medium fighter. Warning. Pretty agile for its size, but it has a lot more offensive firepower. Target destroyed. Heavy fighter. They don't maneuver well, but when you happen to be at the front of them, you can die very, very fast. Yes. Now, these are basic tuning archetypes that we have for our fighter ships class and all ships in that size will be assigned to one of these things. However, based on the ship and what the purpose of the ship is, we have variations of that. For example, we have the interceptor variant of these tunings. This is a tuning variation that can apply to any of these archetypes. An interceptor tuning for a ship means that this ship exchanges the... Okay, being able to tune the ships even if like depending on what they actually are that i do think is going to be really really cool i grew up with cars my whole life and like to tune them have family who actually did racing um i really think that's going to kind of be quite enjoyable myself at least the agility um, with agility we mean the rotation rate and the lateral strafing accelerations simply for speed so they will not be able to turn their velocity vector much. They will not be able to rotate much, but they will be very, very fast just going forward. Racing ships are like the base archetype that almost all racers ended up with so far are interceptors because racers prefer speed over everything else. But you want to pick the right racer for the right track. The other end of the range are our, let's call them fighter bomber tunings. That means we trade agility for simply durability. On top of the fighters, we just keep going with this. We have gunboats for ships that are constellation sized. We have corvettes for something like a, a hammerhead, right? So our, our hammerhead is for us is our anti-fighter corvette. Frigates are basically the biggest ship that players can control in the universe right now. So we're talking Idris, we're talking 890 jumped. I know that Idris players cannot control the Idris, but we're talking uh, ships like the Carrack. Those are frigates really, really. Even though they were doing the dynamic or the Idris event. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't know if you can actually, if you get in the Idris and can take it over, if you can actually keep it and like actually drive it around or not. I know the one that's currently in the game right now if you can get into it i know there's kind of glitches stuff to get in i've not had a chance to ever try it but i know it's there uh, you can drive it around so i wonder if with this event if they're going to allow that as well uh, but yeah i can't wait till that idris comes out just to kind of get in explore it big ones but also they will have variations in their tuning based on the brand or what the purpose of the ship is so these are very big changes that are coming but the main takeaway is that these archetypes are just reference frames for the type of tuning you want to give a ship it does not mean that every ship that you have in the verse will fit a, a specific archetype there are ships which are in between for example the saber is it a medium or a light fighter it's somewhere in between the cutlass has not the durability of a heavy fighter, has, however, the turret of a heavy fighter, so it's somewhere in between. So there are ships which do not fit exactly into these frames. But this is the beauty of it, because these ships, we can make them fit anywhere where they want. We just need to make sure that the balance between them is right. Not everything... I do wonder, because uh, I had the 325 uh, there for a little while, love the ship, or want to love the ship as much as I can, but to be honest, it's just... I don't know, there's something about it that isn't keeping my attention with it. Uh, I wonder if the tuning and everything that they're putting into it on their end is going to actually 
make that ship a lot better. Hopefully make me kind of like it a little bit more because I, I do like 325. I love the concept of it. It's There's just something that, I don't know, turns me off from it right now. Thing fits in a box and it would be very boring if it did. Precision targeting is a new way of aiming at specific parts of a ship. You That's going to be fun as well because like, usually when I do play fighting games, uh, FPS, I love playing sniper. It's just a lot of fun. So being able to actually zoom in and go for certain items on the ships, like the guns or whatever else we can target, that's going to be nice. You get the zoomed in picture of your target and it allows you to paint over specific components of the ship. So if you want to take out the thrusters, you simply aim towards the thrusters and your gimbals will make sure the bullet lands exactly where you're aiming. It's a big rework of the entire target system with the goal to make it not only fit master modes, but also fit the problems we've had with target in the past, which is to control the weapons and the accuracy. Since master modes is bringing everything closer together and master modes is slowing everything down, we need to make sure that the weapon speeds are adjusted as well. It will reduce your fire rate, it will therefore decrease the spread and allow you to be more precise where you hit. Good examples for that is if you want to fire at a ship from very far away and you want to make sure that your shots hit. An even better example is if you have a light fighter and you want to help take down a larger ship. You will not be able to take down the ship by yourself, but you can help other players by crippling the turrets with ballistic cannons, for example, and other subsystems. So that allows you to see better what you're currently targeting. What we're doing is we're bringing all weapons into three archetypes. We have the anti-fighter weapons that have higher fire rate and a higher velocity that allows you to hit targets such as a horde of gladiuses. And then we have the anti-material weapons. Anti-material weapons is the one you bring out when you and your friends want to hunt a hammerhead. It's got the highest damage of all the weapons. You want to deal as much damage as possible, but the target is big and it moves slow, so you don't have... So are we going to be getting new weapons for the guns and stuff as well, or are these just kind of reworking some of the ones that are already in the game? You don't have to worry as much about actually hitting the targets. And then we have unspecialized weapons, which are in between the anti-fighters and the anti-materials. So this is better because it gives you a lot of options for how you want to attack the target. You can just, you know, spray and pray that your shots are going to hit, or you can go into the precision targeting mode, see all the sub-targets that you have available, and then pick out which of these sub-targets you actually want to attack. Next to basically seeing what you're actually hitting, you also just get the stunning view of that big ship that you're targeting, right? Like it's, it's, it's a full screen, zoomed in view on your target. You can see it in all its like glory. You can see all the parts you could shoot off. I think it's great. We've been really happy with the results so far. We're seeing a massive difference in the way combat works and what the players are actually doing within combat. And that's been really good to see. There's still some small things we're working on right now to kind of solve, but we're really happy, you know, we're kind of most of the way there at the moment. I did notice on that Starfare that they were shooting from what looked like the bottom side up at first and they kind of, of course, went around to the other, but I don't know why they were shooting at the bottom of it. But I did see that you could actually see the turret through the entire ship, so that's kind of cool there. The next big thing that the new aiming system has is the removal of the so-called N-1 system. That means that when you have a gimbal attached to a ship, the weapon attached to the gimbal goes down one size. At this point in time, after like lots of testing, That's we're pretty confident that we don't want the system now. anymore. So in the future, if you have a size three gimbal on your ship, it will carry a size three weapon. But we're actually going further with this because from three to, to three onwards, you will not be able to mount fixed guns on your ship anymore. In addition to that, all the turrets, however, will get gimbals. So this is a requirement because of the precision aiming mode, because the precision aiming mode we also want to be able to use on turrets and we need a way to make the bullets fly where we want them to fly without cheating. So this means all turrets, they will get gimbals on their guns so they can properly lead. But to still keep turrets more powerful in terms of their weapon employing capabilities and also because tur turrets cannot just, you know, jump on the way out of the way, the auto gimbal mode will be something that's exclusively available to turrets. So pilots will still be able to manually gimbal their weapons with, you know, either tying it to their controls or by looking around. 
but only turrets will be able to use the auto gimbal system because there's like turrets are supposed to be very very dangerous and so players just have the choice how to apply the damage the best however because auto gimbling is also in an assisted mode it will come with a reduction in fire rate just to keep things things fair so the uh, feedback, it has been going pretty well. We've been really happy with working with the community who's been playing this to kind of fine tune it and make the changes needed. And we have made a lot of changes based upon these feedback. Most of the feedback that we've been getting has been pretty positive around squadron battle, where there's some pretty good group combat dynamics players are reporting positively on. There's some really cool gameplay emerging, such as how players evade now is quite different. You have to drop chaff, break your target lock, break away and like find your opportunity to break away from your, your pursuing ship. What we can see at the moment is that players are very happy with squadron battles. Players are not very happy with the one we won, so this is more an area where we have to improve. Of course, there are some very detailed feedbacks about uh, some tuning choices, how we should make. Yeah, some of the 1v1s that I have have run into. Um, yeah. Granted, especially with the, the whole jousting part of it, so it was not good at all um, i haven't really done very many squadron type battles just haven't ran across any and haven't tried any or any commander i'm just now starting to kind of get more into that but yeah the 1v1 battles are not at the moment not all that great especially for someone like me who doesn't do it a lot i'm not like i said not the best combat uh fighter at all i'm working on it but yeah it's not there so hopefully this will make things a little bit better overall some type of archetypes better rather than not. But in general, it's going to be mostly appreciated. The players are really enjoying the different roles that we've got. The interceptors are quite successful. There's been some pretty good feedback around the Buccaneer. We've probably still got a little bit of work to do around the Lightfire class and 1v1s. But other than that, it's been pretty good. It means you can, you can stay closer. You are much more in control of staying in a closer formation with with other people that you're playing with. When we do our, our regular play tests, we can actually fly in our own version of a formation and we can track targets without being several kilometers off each other. That's your version of a formation. Our version of a formation is generally, if we can see each other still and, and we're not accidentally shooting each other, I'd, I'd consider that a good formation. <laughs> I'm not sure that's the textbook definition of formation. <laughs> I can see you and not crash into you. That's not a formation, Josh. It's, it's, it's a win if at least two of, of uh, the four of us <laughs> manage to make it away in one piece without any friendly fire incidents. So the thing that excites me the most about Master Modes is if you just watch the footage of players dogfighting at the minute, you can really see how close all of those ships are and it just feels so much more cinematic. It's really about the foundation of the, f of the whole flight experience moving forward, because I fully understand that this isn't a game just about combat. We want to communicate that players who want to do combat, they'll go into the master mode for combat. But if you want to go from A to B, you've now got a mode where you can do that without being harassed as much. <laughs> so that's going to be a big plus for the game. It's leveling the playing field a little bit more now. As we... Yeah, the griefing and everything on it. I've not really experienced a lot, but I've not been able to get in as much as I would like to. The griefing and stuff that I've seen has just been horrendous. Um, hopefully this will help. I know the distribution center parts of it are kind of worrying me a little bit. I know they're doing a Star Citizen Live tomorrow on all that. So hopefully we'll get some more details on it and might get a few questions answered on how they're going to deal with that part of it. We slowly breathe more life into each one of these ships. You're going to know this ship by the back of your hand. People seem to like uh, how much more frantic and intimate all the fights are in the Arena Commander testing that we've done so far. And I'm looking forward to hearing people's thoughts once we've rolled it out across all the ships. Not everything that is in 323 you can see already in the master mode, AC mode. It's, um, there's a lot more stuff coming, especially to weapon treatment, how we use capacitors, etc. But overall, based on the feedback that we got so far and also from the increasing player numbers, we're pretty confident that we're on the right track. So master modes and the gunnery system and the whole combat experience is a huge undertaking for us. And we cannot do it without you. So we want you to play it. We need your feedback. Be honest, tell us what you don't like. 
please also tell, tell us what you like um, so we can make all this space combat game great together. So what we learned this week? Well, we learned that with master modes comes a rebalancing of ship performance into dedicated archetypes. That these archetypes are simply where tuning start and will be grown from to ensure that each ship and vehicle provides a unique experience going forward. And that precision targeting, weapon gimbal, and balance changes all combine with master modes to provide a more involved, visceral combat experience for pilots when they arrive in the upcoming Alpha 323. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for letting us share the process of game development with you, and we'll see you all here next week. So yeah, it, it definitely takes a little bit of getting used to on it. Um, the tuning, getting all the archetypes, everything on it's going to be nice. It just, I need to get in play a little bit more on the arena commander and get used to how that it's all working. Maybe do some actual dogfighting and stuff in there with it as well instead of just kind of the moving around and everything. But it definitely sounds good. But let's go ahead and let them finish up, see what kind of outro they're going with today. If they have one. <laughs> so yeah it's definitely kind of good episode it gives a better rundown on what they're doing with the master modes and everything on it um we definitely will be seeing quite a few changes coming in when it does come up so we'll go ahead and let all that kind of close out and we'll see what we've got from there um it's definitely going to be little bit different Oop, change that one a little bit different on it so it's just one we need to get in and play around with to do more and that's basically what it amounts to once 323 does hit we'll see where it goes from there and see if there's any other modifications stuff that might need to be changed well thank you again for tuning in have a good day